Welcome to the Cross the Line Podcast. My name is Carlos Smith and I have another special guest today. This is my guy right here. I've been watching him grind. I love what he's doing right now. Um, right, And the person that I'm with, uh, we went to school together and also he's DJ Montana. What's going on? Not much, man. First off, definitely got to appreciate you for, you know, inviting me onto the show. Oh, no problem, man. I'm glad, man. I just love everything that you're doing. Appreciate so you. So I think you already know my first question is, how did you even start DJing? <laughs> Uh, pretty much back in college, man, a uh, group of friends of mine throwing house parties and between all of, all of us, I was the only one that just, you know, really knew the hip hop music, which was what everybody, you know, that was attending the parties wanted to hear. Right. Um, so pretty much by that, it, it just all fell on me to, you know, be the DJ and then um, also something crazy, you know how like people have like lists of places they want to go, like a bucket list. Right. I had a bucket list of jobs that I wouldn't do. You mm -hmm. know, like, you know, cook, DJ, engineer, just random stuff like that. And right. DJing was actually on the list. So when I got that opportunity, I was like, man, I'm going to try to do this. Like, see, if, you know, just see what it's all about. All right. So that's, um, that's, that's interesting. Like you said, the thoughts become things. So, mm -hmm. you know, just brainstorm. Sure. So how, how did, um, actually Montana, where did Montana come from? Uh, pretty much around that time that, um, you know, I started to do, do DJing. Tony Montana, the song Future and Drake came man. out, and, I, and Drake had a line in it. He was like, "Bitch, I'm Tony in my city." So right. I was like, "Yeah, I'm Tony in my city, just playing around." Then at that time, started DJing. I was like, "I'm gonna just stick with uh, Montana, just DJ Montana, just go so from there." Just stuck. So yeah. that, and that was so. I one of the things I was gonna say was so that act, all of this actually started like around in the murals. Uh, I want to say a little bit afterwards. A little bit after. A little bit after. Because I was gonna say uh, we, for people that know we, that's how I actually. Met you through in music. Yeah. We played in the football, the, yeah. Euro and the NWA. We yeah. you came up with the name. We went undefeated. But uh, that that was interesting. I didn't know if you had started like a little bit during that time. You were still DJing, or it was after. I think it was a little bit after. I mean, I may have been starting to get into it, but at that point, I didn't have a name yet. Um, so I think it really just got started after in the So so when did you actually start taking it serious? Uh, pretty much right after that. So. Year-wise, I say, I think 2012. I say 2012. 2012. But I hit the ground running pretty much, um, cause we was like I said throwing parties. Um, we needed a DJ, so I started taking it serious. Then, at that point, I realized, hey, I'm actually good at this. Right. Bought some equipment, so I pretty much just hit the ground running with it. I know. Um, you used to. I used to see you tweet and post stuff about Caraway. What? What was? What was Caraway? That's actually a group of friends. Um, it was just. Like I said, a group of friends, and we decided to put a name with it. But mm -hmm. it was also more of a lifestyle type thing. Like we just didn't care about any, you know, anybody else's opinion. We gonna turn up, have fun, you know, judge free zone. Just you know, just living life. Mm -hmm. We just had no worries, no cares. Just do they do they still the people that you started up with? Are they still into DJing, or have they just done started another hobby? Uh, I mean, they that group right there really wasn't a DJ thing. It was just. Like, you know, just all of us in this room just kicking it. Right. Um, we all had our different things that we did. Um, but, yeah, everybody's still around here. They're still doing their thing. Um, we're not really throwing parties anymore because one thing about that, we always did house parties. Right. So, you know, you, that doesn't last too long because mm -hmm. cops all oh, that yeah. stuff. Um, so, uh, everybody's still doing the same thing. Um, big salute to them. Um, but, you know, we just... Focusing on other stuff, like I know one of them got a clothing line they just started. Another mm -hmm. one actually has a podcast. So we all just doing our own thing, man. You know, just living life, just still enjoying life. Well, that's dope, man. Do you do you still, with everything that you have going on right now, do you still try to DJ at these local clubs or do you try to stay out the way like Maze and uh, Universal and stuff like that? No, nah, Maze, I still go back to Maze just because... Cause yeah. I don't blame you if you don't. Cause <laughs> I don't really mess with Maze like this. I still do Maze just for the fact that it take me back to that home feeling. Cause right. upstate Maze, you know, that's why I got my start. So every time I go back there, I feel like I'm going home tonight. Like even though it's a different crowd, all of that, I just feel home. Like so many memories in there. Um, but as far as like all the other clubs around here, I will do them if the, if they call and the money right, right. basically. Um, but. It's not my first choice because yeah. clubs, man, you just got to work too hard. Money yeah. isn't always good. Um, you know, you got to deal with the crowd, drunkness, just all that. Yeah. But my first choice, my main thing is just doing like private events, weddings, birthday parties, um, stuff like that, yeah. corporate events. Um, that's really my focus right now. For, for younger DJs listening, um, when you perform at 
like DJ a club, mm -hmm. do you try to make sure you get your money first or do you wait till do they try to pay you afterwards? Uh well now back then when I was first starting out, I just get it at the end because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm still trying to prove myself. Just I don't know too much about the mm -hmm. game. I'm, you know, a little shaky in it. But now on top, gotta have a deposit, gotta okay. have it back in when I get there. Is the support for you now, now that you're growing and the place you're taking off to, is this, is it still the support? Do you still feel like you get a lot of love, or do you still feel like maybe some people who were well, started at the same time you did mm -hmm. is it kind of like a little bit of envy? Uh, I mean, you know, when you're growing, man, when you when you're blowing up, when you're in a position other people want to be in, they gonna hate regardless. Mm -hmm. Other people that just don't want to see you shine because you're from the same city, they gonna hate regardless. But at this current moment, I would definitely say like I got a lot of support, more mm -hmm. than I've had, you know, in the past. Um, and it's crazy because it seems like when I first started out at Upstate, I had support. Because I guess at that point, they just like, you know, we, we rock with him. Like, mm -hmm. he doing good, man. I'm going to support him. And then once I start really building a name, start really making moves, then I felt like people started to switch. Like, mm -hmm. DJs, I don't feel like they quite rock with me the same yeah. anymore. Like, so then I started feeling hate. But it seems like now that I've elevated even more, like, my credentials is, like, solid, like, you can't deny me anymore. I feel like I'm undeniable now. Like you, you gotta support, and if you not support, you, you know, 100 percent a hater. Like I think if it's it's kind of weird to see where like if you're like in an underdog story, like they people root for you then when you're still trying to grind and get to the top. Mm -hmm. And even though you still have you like you still have things you want to accomplish, but well, people see where you're at right now. It's like they don't they don't like to see you see you keep. Being successful, yeah, yeah. that's that's a weird feeling. For they somebody. want you to. It's cool when you're below them. It's cool when you're on the same level as them. But as soon as you start, you know, elevating it above them, they don't want to see that, that cause they they don't want to see nobody doing better than them. They feel like everything that you do have, like you know, if you're on another level than them, they should have that. They've been in it, you know, ten years longer than you. Blah blah blah. They feel like that should be them, not you. But it's weird, and and it's like. They don't. I think they need to realize that when when somebody from your city shine, it makes everybody mm -hmm. look good, and then they can come back and put you on or, or help you get something yeah, else. That's the same thing I tell artists. Like when they got camps, man, one of y'all get on and then put the team on. But I mean, yeah, like you said, it should be like that in the city too. But as we see, it's not like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody. I like to say they just selfish, like. They said they only worried about them. They're not worried about the city. They're not worried about yeah. the home team. And it makes. There's one of my questions is. Uh, you like to, I see you like to try to break artists from home. Like, how important is that to you, for you to try to put on other artists and DJs around this area? When I first started out, it wasn't honestly my focus at all because I was, I knew where I wanted to go, I knew what I was trying to do, and so I needed to put my energy, my focus mm -hmm. into myself. And at the same time, I felt like I had nothing that I could just really do for them to put them in a position, you know, right. to win. Um, but now that I'm in a position, you know, with labels and all of that stuff, you know, my network's a lot larger. Now I feel like it is important for me to do my part and, you know, give back to them basically in a, not, you know, lack of words, but give back to them, help them get, you know, right. to the same level I'm at now. They've supported me. Now it's my turn to support them and use my resources and connects to help them get to the part they want to be. Are you kind of like mindful of who you try to put on? Because, you know, yeah. some, some work ethic. Some people's work ethic may not be like mm, yours, definitely. so you try to pay attention to your um, work ethic? Uh, yeah, because like you said, everybody's work ethic may not be like mine, and honestly, it's not. So I can't have somebody that I'm trying to help when they're not trying to help themselves. I'm mm -hmm. not, I can't try to lift somebody else that's not as hungry as I am. I can't be out there you know, trying to do all of this for you when you're not doing that for yourself. Like I need you hungry, too. You right. got to have that work ethic. So what catches your attention as a DJ? Like? How what do you look for when you listen to new artists or artists artists around this area? Um, first thing I think of is just really first I need to know what type of artist they are. Like if they're club artists like hip hop, they want to be in the clubs. First thing I'm listening for is if it has that club sound. Am mm -hmm. I gonna be able to play this in the club? Um, next thing I listen to if they got pretty much if they got the sauce, they got the image, if they got the brand behind them. Um, then I see what they following look like, just, and then really above majority of that, going back to the work ethic, what is their work ethic like? Right. Are they out here just really pushing? 
Um, but that's what catches my attention first, just their brand and if they're, you know, out here working hard trying to get it out of the mud. When you go DJ at different places, how do you know, because I know you're traveling now, mm -hmm. how do you know, like, what the crowd feeds into? Like, how do you know what kind of records to play? Um, pretty much. Okay. Uh, that's actually an easy question for me. Um, because what something that I feel like has really helped me elevate so much and help people take to me so easily is because when I'm DJing, I put myself in the crowd. I don't right. play what I want to play. I don't play what I think they want to hear. Well, of course I do. But I just put myself in that in their shoes, in their mindset. Like, okay, if he's playing Future now, what would I want to hear right after this song? So that's kind of how I, you know, handle the situation when it comes to me playing what. I just try to put myself in their shoes and just what would I want to hear next. Is it kind of like a necessity when you go, say say you go to Atlanta and there's some local artists from Atlanta, like they may want you to play their records in the club. Do you feel like you need to play some of their songs just mm -hmm. to like... Yeah, definitely because, to, I mean, you and they and you in their hometown, so show their hometown love and right. they're going to show you love. So I feel like it's definitely important, man. Just wherever you go, just show love to the hometown because right. everybody wants to be shown love at the end of the day. All right. Um, the thing about your Armadale, this is way back when we were there upstate, you had to deal with Armadale Vodka. How did yeah. that come about? Uh, pretty much, man, just on social media. And around that same time, I was actually trying to find a deal because I had learned about, you know, DJs and athletes and, you know, stuff like that, getting mm -hmm. sponsorships. So I was just trying to see if I can get lucky and come across one. Um, I actually did. Came across Armadale Vodka. Just re reached out to him pretty much um, in a professional way. Just let him know everything that I had going on and that I was interested in becoming a brand ambassador for them. Um, they reached out to me and then I just started building a relationship with the marketing, direct, marketing mm -hmm. director. Um, and it pretty much just went for there, man. Um, everything was gravy between us. He rocked with me. I rocked with him. And we was able to lock in a deal as a brand ambassador for that. How long was the deal for? Was it a lot of it's pretty much a lifetime thing. Lifetime. Um, or, or, you know, it's up to them to terminate the uh, contract mm -hmm. or whatever. But it's pretty much a lifetime thing because we family. We're all family. So you still tied in with them now or is yeah. it kind of like you kind of... I'm still out? tied in with them. Because, um, I mean, what it is, we haven't quite hit shelves yet. Because we used to be out back when Jay-Z owned us. But then um, our current CEO bought the company. So we're pretty much just... Um, going through a lot of things, just make sure everything's perfect. So we kind of just took a step back to reevaluate things, but everybody's still tied in with each other. Like the brand is still there. I know you um, also had got nominated a few times for Slept On DJ. Mm -hmm. Did you ever win those awards? Nah, or? nah, never won those. Uh, I think I got nominated for that twice. Um, I recently just won Radio Personality of the Year here in the Upstate. So. Um, I think, what, two years ago, I got Key to the City for here in the Upstate. Um, and I think maybe like one or two more awards. But, yeah, the stuff on DJ won, never won those. And it's dope. And at least you, you get to feel some kind of acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. Like, people see your, see your work ethic and everything that you are accomplishing. Who do you feel like, as an artist-wise, is slept on right now? Uh, from the Upstate area? Yeah, or? Upstate. Yeah, start with Upstate and then go to large scale. Like, okay. Uh, artists. Upstate man, definitely gotta give a big salute to my partner Cuzzo uh, from Lawrence County. I feel like he's definitely slept on um, in the area, man. Um, and it's a lot. It's a lot of artists out there that's you know doing a thing right now, but I don't quite think they're slept on because they mm -hmm. got the juice behind them, they got the buzz. But as far as just strictly being slept on, I feel like my man Cuzzo out of Lawrence. Um, as far as mainstream, uh, definitely gotta say K Kel. Like K Kel, I, I like K Kel. That's that's my second favorite artist. Um, you but, feel like he puts out enough material, though? It's like you don't hear too much about him dropping a lot of... The, but even when he does put the music out, it just doesn't reach. Like, it doesn't spread. Like, mm -hmm. people just don't attach to it. But the music be dope. Like, people that actually listen to Camp, they'll say the I thought Kiss 3 was dope. Yeah. I thought was, I, I, I That's like my Kiss favorite three. one out yeah. of them. That was dope. Like, he what got do, a lot of dope music. What do you think he needs to, to stick? Uh, honestly, man, I don't know. And you know, he even had the song, uh, Cut It. Uh, Cut That yeah. Off. And that was a big record. Yeah, huge record. Rec record. <laughs> and, uh, he got the name, like, he got a bit buzz off of that. But still, after that was done, everybody just fell off the wave again. So, honestly, I don't even know. I'm, I'm not sure if it's just more marketing, more branding, 
or what, but yeah, it's crazy that he ain't even still like his name didn't stick out the cut it. Let's talk about one of my favorite artists, Rick. Oh, one of my all time favorite artists, Rick Ross. I know you say you kind of tied in with Ross and MMG. How did that situation come about? Uh, pretty much the marketing is it from uh, Armadale because it got to the point where me and him, or we are like brothers, so anything he need, he hit me up and I help him out with the situation. Anything I need, I hit him up, he helped me out. And it got to the point where um, I told him, like, I'm interested in being a black bottle boy, which is um bel air rose mm -hmm. and ross is tied in with them he was like okay bet i got the perfect you know partner plug you in with reached out to him he was actually um tied in with ross too he's you know actually on the label ross's right hand man um and then we just started building and i was able to tie in with mmg tie in with bel air and just kind of make that thing happen That's dope, man. so they get you they they let you, you tie it in and go to these events with them mm -hmm. or you ever if you have, have you ever been starstruck when you met any of those guys like Ross or honestly bro I have of course I don't show it but right. now I'd be like damn that's such and such right there like damn that's, that's crazy. crazy yeah because yeah. I done been to a lot of events now to it's like to the point now where I'm shoulder to shoulder with shoulder to shoulder with these same artists and I remember like I poured who was it I think it was my first event I poured Scrappy a shot of Armadale which you know Scrappy really ain't not like he yeah. was back ten, 10 years or so. But bro. it's still crazy. Like, I'm right here. Like, hey, bro, take a shot of this. Like, yeah, let's crazy. take one together. Took a shot with him. Like, but it's to the point now I don't get ass starstruck because I'm kind of used to it. But it's still, as I progress to bigger events, you know, bigger names are there. So I'm when I meet like a Jay Z or Kanye, I'm going to still be, like, I'm gonna be starstruck then. I'm going to hold it in. But right. hey, <laughs> it is what it is. Um, it's actually interesting, uh, Ninth Wonder, um, he had an interesting story when I, I, I mentioned the book in my past couple of interviews mm -hmm. um, by Lavelle Moulton called The Worst Times of the Best Times and he had a story in there about how Ninth Wonder ended up meeting Jay-Z and he was saying, basically was saying how he was just putting in the work and grinding and it was a guy that came to North Carolina at the time mm -hmm. and um, what actually happened was he said, I'm down here to shoot a video and I'll just stay in touch with you. A few months later, reached back out to him and said, hey, I know some guys, they want a uh, producer for Jay-Z that needs some beats, and they heard some of your beats, and they really like it, so we want you to come up here. Yeah. And he told him, once he got up there, you know, he was kind of like a little bit nervous, <laughs> but he's like, yeah. he remember what he was up there for, just to yeah. do his job, don't say too much, mm -hmm. and just grind or whatever. And after that, he made some beats with Jay-Z, and after that, oh, it just... Dope. Just it was just on his uh, Destiny's Child, Mary J. Blige, and that's how Night Wonder ended up blowing up that way. But what what are some of the things that when you talk to those guys, what are some things they tell you advice wise? Um, pretty much just stay hungry, just keep going to get it. Like build these networks. Networks are everything. Mm -hmm. Um, let me think what else. Uh, and something else they've told me. I mentioned to them like. See, they'll try, they'll want to do something here, and I'll be like, man, this is just not the market for it. That's why I need to be in like, like Atlanta or something like that. Mm -hmm. And they always tell me, nah, man, stay in Greenville, stay in that type of area because they're so untouched. There's, they're not on the radar for people. Mm -hmm. So bring these type of events here, bring them to the city that you're in, and then that way you pop in, you're bringing something else new to the city. So something else they always told me was just stay where I'm at. Greenville is definitely a growing city, man. And I actually think I want to stay here. Like, we've grown so, so much. You, so you wouldn't consider relocating. You just want to stay. I mean, there's nothing wrong with yeah. leaving, moving on, but then still coming back, showing love to the city. Yeah, of course. So you was... Right now, it's not my focus, but because I want to bring as much as I can back to the city. Like, I want to bring as many opportunities that I can to the city. Um, you know, and that's kind of like, like I said earlier, kind of my way to helping them who's helped me. Um, but if the opportunity presents itself and I just cannot deny it, then it gotta go. Do you think, um, you think South Carolina would kind of slow to pick up on music? Of course. Yeah, we're definitely behind. And it's crazy with Atlanta being two hours down the road, mm -hmm. but we're still slow to pick up on a lot of music. I wonder, I wonder why though. Why, why do you think it is that we don't catch it as quick? Even though we're down south and a lot of artists from down south blow up, why do you think we're so slow catching on the music? I would say pretty much like I just said because we're not on the radar um, with a lot of you know big labels. They don't think let's go to South Carolina 
or a lot of upcoming artists, you know, like the little babies and stuff like that, they don't think, bro, we gotta hit South Carolina. They right. thinking, that's, even that's though true. baby from Atlanta, but we gotta hit Atlanta, we gotta hit Miami, we gotta go to these cities. They not thinking about little old South Carolina because we ain't really got, you know, the big metropolitan cities like that here. Do you think guys, artists around this area need to move to kind of pop? They don't need they to, can stay. They don't need to move, but they need to get outside of here and work. And that's just like me. That's how I built my name. Like I got outside of Greenville and worked. I never stayed local. I never had the local mentality like I'm Greenville. Mm -hmm. Like this is where I'm building here. No, I'm building everywhere else. Greenville, they they gonna see me working and then they gonna support and I'm still gonna do my thing here. But my focus is worldwide. Like I'm thinking bigger. And just moving that that's how you built your connections to other people and getting mm -hmm. tied in. How how important is it to have that cosign in the music business? Um, I think starting out, no, nah, actually I'll take it back. It is important to have a cosign because, especially the right cosign, because let's say like Block Boy JB, he got the Drake feature, the yeah. cosign yeah. that took him off. So really having that right cosign is extremely important because all you need is one, the right one, and you out of here. Yeah, it is big. Um, I cause I I know a lot of people now. When I go home and I actually went somewhere last night with some of my friends, they were saying that you know I seen so many interviews and they would tell other people about it, how you have some professional athletes on. It's like that. It kind of means something when they see if those if you can get some of those bigger names, then they'll come pay you more attention. You also yeah. said uh, you were tied in with Boots as well. Yeah. Uh, pretty much. Through the guy uh, at Maybach, he also works with Bootsy. Mm -hmm. He's at, uh, on Bootsy's company, helping with Bootsy's marketing and all that. So, you know, I'm building that relationship just like I built the one with the guy from Armadale. And it's to the point now where I need anything, I just hit him up and he's able to plug me in with it. Um, and then when he needs help, he hit me up. Like when Bootsy uh, dropped his album, yeah, his album. He gave me a lot of merchandise and just other stuff just to give out around here. So that was kind of, you know, my way of helping him with his situation he got going on. And then he knows, you know, what I'm trying to do. So he helps plug me in with some of these artists and get interviews and just stuff like that right. to help my situation. So everything that you, you have going on, you know, we both went to Upstate, graduated mm -hmm. from Upstate. Do you feel like you needed school at this point? Uh, For me personally, I feel like I needed school. Um. And I say that because everybody's situation is different. Everybody thinks, you know, just thinks different. Me and my my hustle DJing, I I couldn't live off that straight off the jump. Mm -hmm. Um, honestly, still can't just solely live off of that. So, you know, it was important for me to get in, like, get a full time job. That way, I can maintain, you know, my bills and everything else. So, you know, I'm able to do that with that degree. Had got a uh, you know good paying job, but also in a deeper sense when it comes to your hustle I've always told people like you got to be able to invest in yourself mm -hmm. so That's a fact. if you're not really making the money you need to invest then like what you doing like you got to do something to get this money to invest in yourself if you're not investing it's going to take you twice as long to get on or you're not even going to make it on at all I think the biggest thing that I took from school was pretty much networking mm -hmm. and how just met, I met some of my best friends at college or whatever because some of the stuff that I we they taught us is like you really don't even need it that much. Yeah, sure. And I, I just to me I always say I I don't know if I would if I had to do it all over again I don't know if I would go back just because of the debt. <laughs> yeah, that would say I'm definitely not going back. Like, no, I'm done. No, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. I'm done, but <laughs> but just like you saying what um interview football mm -hmm. that's how how we ended up linking up with whatever yeah. so that was some of the best times that i had at um at upstate actually i would definitely say that like college those really are the best years of your life if yeah. you live right you know have fun and still get your stuff done like take care of yeah. business while you're there it's the best times of your life i felt like it pretty much just bought me like four more years of just you know just trying to figure out what i wanted to do oh, after, yeah. after after high school give you a chance to find yourself like yeah. you know the things that you want to do the things that you love to do just stuff like that because what i think is it's to me it's it's hard to ask an 18 year old what they want to do for the rest of their life yeah because you know pe grow even grown people now change their careers <laughs> yeah like, you ask the them time. they still don't know <laughs> exactly so i was like yeah i felt like it gave me like four more years mm -hmm. to just figure out what it was i wanted to do and then i ended up my senior year got the uh, internship so I was covering the Hornets and Panthers and it was kind of like a big shock to me just to see 
get an opportunity to go cover professional athletes. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, I grew up watching these guys, yeah. and I'm right here in front of them, and get a chance to ask them questions and different things like that. So that's one thing. The biggest thing I took from college was basically networking. Mm -hmm. I'll say the biggest thing I took from college is just having good relationships. Mm -hmm. um, so that. So that yeah, that does go back yeah. into what you're saying. Network, just having good relationships, um, because you never know who is going to become who ten years down the road, That's five years, even you know two years. You just never know. So always keep those relationships, keep those bridges standing, and keep them strong. So you did, so you didn't major anything kind of related to music. What, what was your Not name? at all. <laughs> I'm actually man. I'm actually like a little IT nerd. Uh, my. My degree was in information management and systems. So mm -hmm. at my full time job, I work in the IT department. I, mine is I my mine was uh, information management, but it was nothing. You know, I got burned out doing it. So I was the thing that I knew it was something was sports related. I wanted mm -hmm. to do was because if we had a subject in school and they wanted to give let us talk about something, I would always have something sports related. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was like, you know, I need to do something that's more sports related. So then I get my internships and everything like yeah. that, but I, I didn't really want to keep doing computer programming because I was strictly doing that just for the uh, money. Yeah, yeah. But see, with me, like, I want to do so much and, like, the things I want to do, it needs the money behind it. So right. I use my degree, my full-time job to pretty much just fund everything. When did you play at Alpha? Was that? Uh, spring 18. So I actually crossed March 3rd of 2018. Oh, so you went back? No, you can actually do um, after grad, like a oh, grad okay. chapter. I didn't even know that. Mm -hmm. Have you, um, the people that you're meeting, have you ran into anybody that was kind of stuck up to you or you were just maybe, in general? Yeah, well, bigger name, like celebrity, anybody that you've uh, maybe been looking forward to meeting, and then once you met them, you're like, they're not the person that I thought they were. Um, uh, I've had that, you know. You don't have to say I, names, but, you know. I've ran into a couple people who weren't who I thought they were. Their personality isn't the same, but I don't think I've really just ran into anybody that was stuck up. Like they speak or whatever, but it's just not the same personality that you see on TV or that you hear in their music. Um, so I would definitely say that. True story, this is one that I, um, I've, I've told some people before. I won't say his name on camera, but I remember, um, it was, it was actually, as a matter of fact, it was the same night that they announced the, um, the verdict of the guy killed uh, Mike Brown. Okay. And um, we were actually in the lock. We went into the locker room after the game, and one of the reporters was talking to him, and he said, "You know, I'll tell you what I really feel about the media, mm -hmm. but I don't feel like getting five twenty-five thousand dollars." <laughs> so we go in the training room and just wham, just slam the door shut. We won't talk to anybody the whole time, and you know it. It happens though. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's a lot it of athletes who don't really care for talking. Uh, probably the most professional guy I ever met was Dirk. I mean, Dirk and Whiskey, he uh, mm -hmm. sat there and just talked to anybody. I mean, he just stood there the whole time. Whatever you ask him, he mm -hmm. answered everything. That's what I tell a lot of people. Like, you see these people on TV, and they may, you know, you look at them a certain way because of how they act. But in real life, they're really just like us. Like, they're human cool people. Yeah. Like, a lot of them, some of them won't, but a lot of them will just sit down with you and yeah. just chop it up. They'll give you advice, you know, they'll listen to what you got yeah. going on and try to help you out, you know, the same way somebody helped them out. And a lot of times, they, they talk about the same stuff we talk about, the movies they watch mm -hmm. or the music they listen to. So, I, you will hear those conversations in the locker room with those guys, and you, you know, <laughs> they're, they're just, human, like, us. just they're, they're, like us. They may have more money, mm -hmm. but at the same time, they're human like yeah. anybody else. Um, also... Go back to MMG real quick. Who can you talk a little bit about Jeff Cherry? Yeah, that's my partner, man. Um, I met him through the guy that I originally met on the Maybach label. Um, and he was like, "Hey, you know, just a favor for him. We got, you know, Ross just signed Jeff Cherry. I want to bring him through your station. Let him, you know, get on air, play a song, interview him. You know, the full nine. So I did that and. He was actually my very first radio interview. So of course I'm going in nervous, man. You know, I had a list of questions in front of me, but the interview was like, it was amazing. Like, dude was, you know, real humble, just like the people we talking about. Just, we had a real conversation, just regular right. ass conversation. Um, and so we finished the interview and he was just like, man, I'm really feeling your energy. You know, your, your interview, probably one of our best that we've had. And I was like, that's crazy. Like, because this is my first one. Um, so... You know, artists from Leo Gone, Haiti, he's Haitian, um, moved to New York when he was young, then he moved to the A. 
Um, so yeah, he was featured on the TV show called Side on VH1. That's the one with Ross. Yeah, the art. okay. With Ross, Lenny, and a Dream. Um, Jeff ended up winning the whole show, so he was able to get a contract with MMG Rick Ross. So now I'm his DJ. Um, so we just, you know, we got the main single out, Price Tag, that we push in. Um, mm -hmm. The album he just dropped, Rome. All of that is available on, you know, all the major music platforms. Um, so, you know, Haitian artists, and, you know, we just we grind so, it So out. wherever he goes, that's, you the official DJ for him, mm -hmm. so wherever he moves to, that, that's yeah. where, you, where you go. Uh, we just had a show um, this past weekend in Birmingham, Alabama. Went down there, killed it. Big shout out to the, uh, you know, everybody that showed us love down there. So yeah, like when he got a show, I'm on road with him. Man, that's that's dope, man. So it's probably no. Is this an album mixtape that he just put out? He put out an album uh, a couple months ago called Rome. Rome. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I gotta check that out. Speaking of albums, let's give me your best album so far this year. Uh, so far this year, man, we were just talking about this off camera, but I I think I gotta go with the J Cole KOD. I think I gotta go with that. This one of this year, I gotta go with KOD. And I know you said uh, Nipsey, I'm right? I'm giving it Nipsey, yeah. See, I've never been Neither just a like huge tough. Nipsey fan. I mean, I've, I've always heard some, I've heard songs in the past from Nipsey, but this was like the first album that I actually listened to and it just stuck. Like, I'll go in now and just play Nipsey and just rock. Let it ride. Yeah, I, I like Nipsey. See, I can do that with K.O.D. I'm about to go back and lips, uh, listen to Nipsey again. K.O.D. grew on me a lot. It, I didn't... At first, I thought it was like, alright, it's, it's alright. It was definitely better than Four Your Eyes Only. I thought it was just terrible. Yeah, I didn't like that one. My all-time favorite from him, though, is the uh, Forest Here Drive. That's the one I really love. And I see, for me, in the whole spectrum of, of Cole, I, when I look at it, I would say, just from mixtapes and albums, mm -hmm. KLD was probably the fifth best project I heard from Cole. I I, I'm, I'm, I'm considering, I, when I go back, I say... Friday Night Lights, uh, the warm up, then I'll say right. Born Center, uh, Forest Hills Drive, and then this one. To me, the biggest debate would be whether Friday Night Lights is better than the warm up. Those two are the ones that I thought. Between were. those two, I, I'm going Friday Night Lights. But all the time, oh, for some reason. The warm up is tough. I feel like Friday night, light, Friday night Lights. I mean, I, I give Friday Night Lights the edge, but. Sometimes when I go back and listen to it, I'm like, I don't know, man. I might have to go back and, <laughs> Look, and, and switch. Yeah. It's just so hard between them two. Like, and, because, they... and because I like how, like, at the time, we were actually in college, and, and those songs that he was making about broke, I mean, he still talks about it You can feel it. Yeah, you can feel, feel it. Yeah. Were you that when he, he came to um, Oak I was just about to ask you that. No, nah, I wasn't there I, yet. I was there, man, but I didn't go... To the show. To the show. No, I wasn't even at Upstate yet. I think I was in the dorm, man. I didn't even go to the show. <laughs> wasn't it like a free concert, though? Or? Yeah, it was a free... It, it was a spring fest. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't even go up there. I was Because like, at the time, I was like, man, I don't even really listen to Cole uh -huh. that much. So I'm like, I don't even think I want to go to it. But now, when I when I go back and play the music now, I'm like, man, I should have been there. Look. Because that was before Cole was Cole. Yeah, I do know that. Now... You know, we don't even have the money to bring him mm -hmm. back to Upstate now. Nah, we'll probably now. never see him around. Yeah. Probably even this area, like South Carolina. Or, you know, at least Greenville, Spartanburg. Yeah, yeah. it's a done deal mm -hmm. for that. But, yeah, for me, KOD will be my, I would say, I'll give him third right now behind Pusha T. I, I think I like Pusha T a little bit more than KOD. Oh, so you going Nipsey, Pusha, then KOD, Pusha, then uh, KOD? Yeah. That was, it was, it was dope, man. I think, and it, I just... I was like, I was listening to Pusha T again yesterday and a little bit earlier today. I was like, man, this Pusha, even though it's seven songs. Yeah, that's what I said. Then it's short, though. So Yeah. I, I mean, if I listen to I'm going to listen to both of them some more, but maybe by the end of the year, my, my picks may change. But I'll right still now. say I'm going to give it to Nipsey because Nipsey was, Nipsey mm -hmm. was video life was dope. Last question. Um, What is your ultimate goal? Um, My ultimate goal, man, is honestly... You know, very simple answer, which I know is your goal too, but just be successful in any way possible, man, because, you know, as a black man out here, a lot of us, we are as successful as we want to be, as successful as we should be. Um, so, you know, I'm just trying to do good by, you know, everybody, you know, and just be successful, just make it out, just make something of myself, stay out of trouble, you know, um, never been arrested, no kids, nothing like that, just trying to just build man just trying to be successful as a black man but uh realistically right now i'm pushing to um and 
and I say right now because I've been exposed to so much recently. Like, it's like, damn, what I wanted to do is not what I want to do anymore. What I thought I wanted to do just now is not what I want to do in the future now right. that I'm realizing two days later. Um, so right now, man, I want to be, I've, I've become real big on brands and marketing, just all of that. So I would love to be um, a marketing exec for either, you know, like a music label or just a regular company in general. Um, but ultimate goal, man, I want to be involved still with music. So I want to handle like the marketing and branding for an artist and their company. That made me think about something real quick. We were actually talking about it a little bit earlier. You, you were saying, when you just said that you're not, what you're doing is not really what you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And you actually ended up at the radio station. Mm -hmm. How, was that after school when you ended up uh, getting that gig? Yeah, that was after school. That was actually, I hit two years in, I will hit two years in August. It's coming August. Um, but with that, coming straight out of college, I was still big on DJing clubs, like all of that, like being mm -hmm. a man here in, you know, Greenville. So, uh, reaching out to radio stations, just trying to get on air, because everybody knows, if you're on the radio, but you lit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, it wasn't an opportunity to DJ that presented itself. It was actually like a behind the scenes type job. So, I took that job, you know, I'm cool with that because now I'm in the building. I got a key um, and you know, my DJ opportunity is going to come. That still hasn't come to this day, but an on air personality position came. So of course I'm not going to turn that down. Right. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was able to get on air. So now I'm on air Monday through Saturday. Um, and I'm actually loving that a little bit more. I think I prefer doing that versus DJing on air. So right. uh, yeah, just I'm, I'm, you know, taking radio day by day, just still building my brand within that. Um, so as you see, I do a lot. Right. DJ, yeah. radio, work full time. And I, I was actually up there a couple of years ago at Intercom when they brought me on. It was just for running the board. Mm -hmm. so, That's actually how I came on yeah. board up And that, that really wasn't what I wanted to do either, but I just knew, you know, it was just an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So I, I was actually driving. It was crazy. I was driving from home, which would be about almost an hour drive, making $10 an hour. But mm -hmm. I was just like, you know, I mean, it's not really, honestly, the money wasn't really worth the drive. Yeah. But I was just like, you know, this is an opportunity to just get a foot in the door. And But and like I tell every people, man, like the biggest and best opportunities for you aren't always attached with a paycheck. Exactly. Money is not always involved in every great opportunity for you. Like a lot of the things that I did starting out, I felt like I looked crazy doing it, even telling the people, yeah, that's what I'm doing. But... It helped me get here. Like I would, I would go back and do those that's same right. BS things again. Yep. Because if I wouldn't have done them, I wouldn't, I would never be here. Yeah, because that was my first time, you know, working at a radio station. And, it, and we had sometimes I would get opportunity to speak on air when we did Friday night football mm -hmm. and, and different shows, ESPN and Upstate. I would have the opportunity to talk, but for the most part, I was just running the board. Yeah. But they also told, showed me how to come in and edit the audio for a show, so I, I could. At the beginning, it took me a really long time to do mm -hmm. all of it, but then after I got used to it, I could edit like maybe three or four hours of audio in 15 in no time. minutes. Yeah, just like that, I'm, I'm done. So it, also, you have it's like you need to, whatever you're doing, take some, learn something from it. Yeah. Whether it's, yeah. Even though it's not what you want to do, just take something from the opportunity yeah. that you have. Something else that I always tell people is like every opportunity that you get, whether it's big or small, flip that into a bigger opportunity. Like I mm -hmm. get a lot of small opportunities, but I, I've taken those and I flipped them, made them even bigger. And the outcome was like so much greater than it was originally even supposed to be. So you just, you know, just got to keep grinding, man. Just never look at something for that's what it is. Something can always be improved. Something can always be made bigger. And that's just how I look at things. That's a fact. Now, um, I also, for me, I, I, I probably would have still stuck around there for a while, but then, you know, student loans hit me. Yeah. That's why yeah. I said I don't think I want to go back to school anymore. So that's why I'm done with it. Um, yeah, yeah, the that, folks off your back now. Yeah, uh, Sally I'm done too, but <laughs> you know, nobody don't want six problems with Sally May. Right. right, I'm telling you, it's no six hundred dollar payments. Nah, yeah, I, I got time for that. Five hundred a month. Trust me. <laughs> I said, oh no, you did that, but mm. me, I had to leave. I ended up. That's why, I, at some point, it would just cost me too much money. I said, man, I gotta mm -hmm. go now. So I talked to him and told him, you know, um, I, I need to go because the, these student loans killing my yeah. pocket. And yeah. I wasn't really making nothing, so that ended up. Well, I didn't stay at the radio station, yeah. but I did learn how to edit the audio, so 
I took something yeah, from it. Yeah, and you can use that, you know, in your own situation mm -hmm. outside of radio, which everything I do, like, you know, with radio, I've learned so much in radio, and now I'm able to take that and build something else, make something of my own, use it towards my own brand. So, like, everything that I do, I try to figure out how I can, you know, perfect it in a way and use it to help elevate my own brand and my name. That's a fact. I appreciate you, man. Uh, hopefully, everybody took something from it, opportunity. Every opportunity doesn't have a paycheck attached to it, mm -hmm. so hopefully you guys yes. learn from that. But uh, keep doing your thing, man. You know, I'll, you got my support, man. We'll, you, man. we'll be rooting for you. And uh, anything, oh, tell the people how to find you on social media. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook, everything is DJ Montana 864 So just look me up on there, man. Yeah, okay. I definitely appreciate you for having me. Big oh. salute to you. You know I'm supporting you a thousand oh, I appreciate percent, it, man. Too. So, hey, we all building together. We're going to help each other get to the top. Uh, no, that's what it's all about. Definitely. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Till next time, keep chasing dreams. This is Cross the Line Podcast. Thank you for listening.